<laughs> Alright, so at this point we had done a little bit of animating, we started to play with the brush tool and such. So all of this hard work perhaps you want to keep. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but I'm gonna take a quick moment to save it because unfortunately uh, you know we could lose the work pretty easily. So I'm gonna do a file save as. I'm gonna save this work and you, you wanna have a, a flash drive as soon as possible to save your work. All of these computers have deep freeze. Uh, the Windows computers have deep freeze, so if uh, you restart the computer, anything you changed on them will revert. But that means that if you had your document saved onto the desktop, you're gonna lose it. So I forgot to bring my flash drive, but I'm gonna save this on the desktop. Um, so it'll ask for a name. It'll be something.fla. It's a flash document. So you'll be able to open it at home if you have Flash or uh, Adobe Animate. I'm going to save this. Let's see, I can call it just uh, Practice One. So I'm going to save that with some name. It'll get saved .fla. It's an Animate project. I'll save that. We were drawing on a layer, and the very first frame that we drew was, in my case, just gibberish. Frames four to five were real frames. I can remove frames. That first frame, I don't really need it anymore. I want to remove it. So if you right-click frame one, we have remove frame. I'm going to remove that frame. It doesn't uh, work with the rest of my project. It was just some scribbling. So I'm going to remove the frame. Right click the first frame, remove frames. So now I've only got frames one through four. I'm working with layer one. This is a certain face. I want to draw kind of a face again, but a little smarter. So what we'll do is double click layer one. We can then name it. If you've worked with Photoshop or other software, it's very useful to name your layers because you'll know what's in a layer, what you're working with. So double click the layer one. I'll call this face one. For the moment, uh, keep everything lowercase, no spaces. Face one. This will make more sense and be more important later on when we do coding. We're going to write code to do things to layer one. So it's easier to keep it all lowercase with no spaces. This is pretty universal in all of the Adobe software and in most digital software, but there's a way for us to make a brand new layer somehow in this panel right here, somehow there's a way to make a new layer. Anyone figure it out? Uh, that, for next uh, folder, I This one right here? No, that's, uh, a, that's a trash can. No. Yes, uh, next to it right here. Uh, the there's keyboard commands that we'll get to, definitely, yes. Uh, but here, the very first icon looks like a little piece of paper, like tearing off a new sheet of paper. Click on that, new layer. It adds a new layer on top of what already exists. And these frames look a little different. We had a black dot on previous frames on face one. Now we've got a, a white dot or a, a clear dot on frame one. And then we've got a square on frame four. All of these symbols eventually will make sense. And as I talk about them, the concept will come together. But basically, there's animation happening here because we've got frames. And animation is frames. Some frames have something on them. I drew faces on frames one through four, so they've got a black dot. That's telling you there's something in that frame. Some frames have a white dot, means there's nothing on that frame yet. 
I haven't drawn anything there yet. And then the white square, we'll, go, we'll talk about that a little later. I'm going to be on frame one. I've got a face one layer, and I've got a layer two. Let's call that face two. Double click, double click your layer two and name it face two, then press enter or return. So I drew a face on uh, face one, and that's kind of going to uh, interfere with new faces that I want to draw. So you see on your timeline here, we've got a column where there's an eye, there's a column where there's a lock, and then columns for colors. So if you click the dot on the eye column on face, it hides it. Obviously, it didn't delete what you've drawn so far, what you've animated so far. <coughs> it just hid it. Let's hide our face one. Make sure you're on face two. It's highlighted. Click on frame one. We're about to draw a face, yes. So grab your brush tool again, draw some face. We're going to need to get used to um, thinking in four dimensions now. You've got length, width, height. What's the fourth dimension? Time. We need to now think about time also. I've drawn something with a width and a height and maybe a depth. And then I have to think about the fourth dimension of time. That thing's been drawn on frame one. How does it change on frame two? How does it change on frame three, four, five, infinity? So I've drawn another face on frame one. I want to animate it again. But this time I said I want to animate it smarter. On frame two, right click, insert keyframe. Not blank keyframe. Insert keyframe. Insert keyframe copies your current frame into frame two, so you can change it. Blank keyframe, obviously, then gives you a blank, uh, an empty screen for you to draw something new. And we haven't talked about onion skinning yet, but I can't see my previous frame unless I flip back and forth easily. Here's another way to animate. Insert keyframe. And notice I've got then a second black dot. It shows you I've drawn something on frame one and frame two. So maybe this time, what I've drawn here, let me change what's here. What about if I, you know, grab the mouth, click, double click the mouth and like move it down a little bit, double click the eye and move it up a little bit, double click, move that eye. Maybe also you know, pull the mouth down a little like this, the edges. So I'm going to try this way first. What's already there? I'm going to change it a little bit. Maybe I can draw something else on it, but for the moment I'll just change what's already there. Let's uh, go to frame 3 of the face 2 layer. Right click, insert keyframe, it makes another copy. I can then start to change it. This time maybe what I want to do, I'll get my brush tool again, B for brush, and start changing the actual drawing that's there. I haven't mentioned it yet, but we also have an eraser. Looks like the classic, what are they, what were they called, the pink pet? Those little classic pink erasers that we used to chew on, I mean that, that you used to chew on. So the, uh, the little uh, pink eraser right there, you can click that, and that'll let you also erase. This has also got a size, and one thing to, er to learn early on, I've got a really small eraser right there. I need a bigger one. I could, with the eraser, you know, change its size on the properties, but one thing to learn quickly 
is on the keyboard, I also have a way to increase and decrease the size of my brushes and erasers. I can use the the square brackets. On the keyboard, there's the P and the backslash. Between them, there's a left square brace or bracket and a right square base brace or bracket. And what that does is it increases and decreases the size and the shape. <coughs> Well, that's all coming from the eraser tools options. I've got the eraser tool at the bottom. Again, you've got one strip, but I've got it in two columns. You've got a circle. If you click and hold that, it gives you different shapes and sizes. So right here, I've got the eraser tool selected. Any of these tools with a little triangle in the corner will see you can click and hold and you'll kind of like open up a drawer with more to work with. Maybe use the eraser to change your drawing a bit. <coughs> and one more frame. Frame 4, right click, insert keyframe. And I'll change it one more time. You'll see that as you work here, when you zoom in, you'll be able to get different editing abilities. When I'm zoomed out, it may not change exactly how I want. When you zoom in, it often does then manipulate how you might envision. When you're zoomed in, remember, use the hand tool. One quick way to always activate the hand tool quickly is if you hold the space bar on your keyboard. While you're holding space bar, you get the hand tool temporarily, and then you can click and drag. So I'm using the selection tool. I don't want to take a moment to switch over to the hand tool. Maybe I can click H to switch to the hand tool quickly. Then I have to press V to switch back to selection. Maybe a fast way is remember that if you hold the space bar, you will temporarily get the hand. Whatever tool you have, space bar click to drag. We have a lot of keyboard shortcuts. As the class goes on, I'll be talking about them, mentioning them, and they're in the books. You want to memorize them as soon as possible. I want to zoom out so I can double click the magnifying glass. So this time we're making faces based on the original face. We're inserting a keyframe. It's basically copying an existing drawing and letting us change it. Let's pause here. Does everyone have four new drawings that you drew on a face two layer? You need a bit of help. All right, so if you want to see the result, how did we make it show the result? Control, test. That's got a keyboard shortcut also you might want to memorize quickly. Control, enter, or command, enter. So when we animate this, what do we see? We see too much. We see the first face and the second face. Just because we hid a layer doesn't mean it then doesn't show up in the finished animation. So let's fix that. We'll go back to animate. It'll probably keep jumping you to the output panel. Remember to go back to timeline, panel. We hid face one, but hiding it is only useful in the software when you're working. If you really don't want that uh, layer to be visible when it gets animated, what you can do is right click face one, the layer, right click face one, and we can set it as a guide. A guide. 
kind of like tracing paper in a way. It won't show up when you test it. So right click, face one, set it as guide, and then control enter to check your animation. Or go up to the control menu and then test movie. Turn on guide. Notice how that changes. Does anyone know what that is? I don't think they even use them in the real world anymore. Anyone know what that icon is? It's a T-square. That would be the ancient way that you would draw straight lines in your graphic design classes. When I took graphic design classes here, back in the early 2000s, we had those things. We had this metal thing that you put on your table. It's T-shaped, and you draw straight lines with it. Now we've got digital ways. But it's still that. kind of looks like a hammer. kind of looks like the Minecraft hammer, kind of. But it's a T-square. After you turn that into a guide, then I'll test it. Control, test. There we go. So I kind of like that animation a little better because the face isn't jumping around all over the place like it was on the first version because I couldn't see what I was drawing. This one's got the head in one spot and then the face changes and obviously as time goes on we'll be able to animate this really well. But for the beginning, starting point, this is fine. And so if you got it up to this point, and if you've never used Adobe Animate before, pat yourself on the back, you are an animator. We'll get more complex, of course. We'll add sound. We'll have smooth animation. Right now, this animation is way too, it's, it's too jumpy. It, it happens too quickly. It's not smooth. We'll be able to fix that, if you want, because there's so many styles of animation. I can do, like, traditional Disney animation, you know, you know, Lion King animation, how smooth that is. I can do, you know, the Yogi Bear kind of animation that it's kind of stiff on purpose. I can do various uh, styles of anime, and even that, there's such a range there. Um, you know, Cowboy Bebop style animation is different from... Uh, not that, not that much. <laughs> not, not, not that much, I would say. It's still realistic. I'm talking about something more crazy like... Uh, Samurai Jack style, yeah. That, that's American slash anime style. So there's so many ways that we can animate. And maybe I want it to be kind of like this, kind of stuttery or, or, or stilted. That could be a style that I like, that I develop. That's fine. I'm not going to force any kind of style, of course. Your own style of how you draw and animate will be your style. There will be assignments, but I'm not going to grade you on, oh, I don't like how that face looks. I'm going to grade you on, you didn't use the tool properly but not how it actually is. That's subjective. So we'll go back to animate. We'll go back to the timeline. Let's look at another way to do animation. Let's turn face two into a guide and let's hide it. So that means right click face two guide. Click the I column to hide it. And then click the icon down there to create a new layer. We'll call that face 3. Lowercase no spaces. We get a new layer with a white dot that says there's no drawing here yet. I'm going to get the brush tool, draw a face again. Maybe I'll finally give him a nose so he can smell something. So I've got a face. I'm going to save that. I think we have auto save in Flash or in, in Animate. We will auto-save at some point, like t every 10 minutes or something. But if you hadn't saved it and it's 9 minutes and the computer crashes, you lost it. So remember to save. Uh, anyone know the keyboard shortcut to save quickly? Control S or Command S on the Mac. So draw a face.
here's another way that we can draw. We did the way of copying the previous frame into the new frame and changing it. That way works. Here's another way. As a starting point of the previous animation, I'm going to draw a new, as a starting point of the previous frame, I'm going to start a new frame. We'll start this off by first going to the second frame, right click, insert blank keyframe. We start with an empty document, uh, an empty screen. But the way for me to then see the previous drawing, to then be able to draw the next drawing, is called onion skinning. If you look at an onion, it's kind of translucent. It's, they should call it, you know, tracing paper mode, but it's onion skinning. I'll be able to see my previous frame so that I could draw the next frame. The way you do that is you have a lot of buttons down here on the timeline. They're kind of in groups. Right before the little group of the frame rate, there's a group here for onion skinning that has a keyboard shortcut. There's one icon there. I'm on frame two. I want to see what frame one looks like. Click the onion skin icon right there. The timeline changes to show you. We're going to show you one frame back and a few frames forward. It's showing me one frame back. That's my previous frame. It's faded out a little bit. But now it's got, it's like tracing paper. I can draw something new on frame two based on frame one. So you can turn that on or off right there. So now based on what I've got here, I'm going to draw the next frame of this simple animation. So, you know, I, I'm going to kind of trace over what I've already drawn for the face a little bit. It's not going to be the same, and that's okay. Maybe I don't want that. That's another style of animation, that each frame is slightly different. So here, I'm going to start to change the face. Based on what I do previously, I'm going to draw something new on top of that. If I turn off onion skinning briefly and go back to frame one, it looks like that. Frame two looks like that. I'll go to frame three, insert blank keyframe, turn on onion skin that has keyboard shortcut, shift, alt, o. On the Mac, I think it's like shift, control, o, perhaps. So now I'm seeing two frames behind and one frame ahead. Do you see that? I'm on frame three. And my previous two frames are visible and one frame ahead. Maybe I'm seeing too much. Maybe I'm seeing too many frames. Maybe I only want to see one frame back. So you can grab the edge of the timeline right there and drag it forward. So try that. I, I'm seeing too many. I'm seeing too many frames behind me. I only need to see one. So if you grab the edge and just drag it over, you see one frame behind you. Sometimes it is useful to see several previous frames to make a smoother animation. But I think for me it's getting in my way. I only need to see one frame back. So just grab that edge there and pull it, pull it forward. And I'll draw my next frame. So frame one, frame two, frame three, third frame is based on frame two, frame two is based on frame one. I'm using onion skin to help me 
to help guide me along here. And then finally, frame four. Right click, insert blank, and then draw a new frame based on the previous frame. So I'm going to save what I've got. I'm going to I'm going to use the shorthand quickly test it. If I say that that should be right away you remember that's control menu test or control enter. So when I say okay let's test it that just means quickly you know go check it in the browser do the control test. <coughs> if I test that still might be going too fast again as we go through the animation and if you do get a chance to ever get or look at this book the animate CC 12 principles this will be the whole knowledge and manual about how do I really animate something really smoothly and really nice it takes you know more than four frames and it takes other skills and abilities and concepts but we'll get to those things. Any questions so far? Are you getting any uh, interesting animation happening? Other than the original touch? What's that? It's a bit more fun than regular flash. Possibly. I've looked at them both, and there's brand new things. So fun is the opposite word. So here, um, we've got an animation. We need sound, color, all of that stuff. Let's start to color things a little bit. I'm going to close, go back to Flash, go back to Animate, go back to Frame 1. We'll have a more in-depth look at this coming soon, but uh, I want to start coloring this. And uh, coloring in Flash, again, it's, uh, I really like it. It's so powerful. Once you know these, these techniques, these advanced techniques that I'm going to talk about, you're going to see how powerful this is to, to do animation in, in Animate. So to basically start it off here, uh, there's a tool, a paint bucket. There's a K in paint bucket, so you can remember keyboard shortcut K. I'm going to fill in a color into what I've been drawing so far. So uh, with the Paint Bucket tool, click on that, you have then the properties of either what's happening here or down on properties here. We have a fill color. So I'm going to choose a new color to fill into the shapes that I've got here. Uh, so uh, I'm going to click either the bucket in the Properties panel or the bucket in the Options of the tool. Uh, both will work. Choose any color. I'm going to go with like a classic Simpsons yellow color. Maybe it's one of these over here. I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to click to to uh, start to paint right here. And so I'm filling that in. And in my case, it also filled in the eye because I didn't have it closed. I drew that eye, and the color spilled into the eye as well. So I'm going to undo that. That shape is not closed. We're going to see that in Animate, open and closed shapes are very important. They do different things. So to fix this, in my case, maybe yours filled in just right. But in my case, I'm going to go back and finish the part here that I didn't 
finished. So I'll just finish it like that. And there's going to be many ways to <coughs> fix up our drawings as we go on. But for the moment, I'm just going to finish the part of the eye that I never finished. And then I'll go back to the bucket and fill in the color. Did not fill. So I drew a very simple face, putting in the color. Frame two, I never colored that one, so I need to color frame two as well. Fill in the color. Frame three, same thing. So now I've colored each of those frames. I can get more complex. We'll talk about more complex coloring later. Another keyboard shortcut, so I'll be mentioning several as time goes on, is I can go back and forth on my frames easily on the keyboard with a comma or the period. See on the keyboard I can press comma or period to just go through my frames quickly. And if I save it and test it, I started to colorize it. So this is my animation so far. I'm getting acclimated with the software. If I'm not familiar with it, there's still many things to learn about the software, many nuances. Our first unit, a couple of weeks, we're just going to focus on drawing. We're going to have various exercises in drawing. We're going to see that some of these tools can help you create really cool drawings quickly. Animation, we won't be covering animation. This was a quick introduction to animation. We'll do animation later, probably maybe in a month or so. I want to spend the first four or three weeks or so just on drawing. Then we'll do animation. We're going to break out the pen tablet starting next time. This is how the class will go. Lecture, plenty of time for you to get helped in class time, in lab time. These videos are recorded and uploaded. Send me an email to get the videos. Review them at your leisure. They'll always be there for you to check out night or day. You just have to send an email to request them. I'm going to do general questions, and then we'll wrap up our main lecture. Any general questions on any things we talked about today? All right, so for the moment, I'm going to end the main lecture. We'll have lab time until 1. You can stay, do anything that you'd like. We'll have lab time, tutors, and me here. And at 1 o'clock, we need to wrap up on the dot. There's a class right after us. And then we'll do it again next uh, Monday.